After all the buildup and all the hype, November the 1st is finally here. It's Brett Favre's return to Lambeau Field. Oh, the anticipation for this day and this very moment. We welcome you to sold out Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The six and one Minnesota Vikings come to town to take on the four and two Packers. Hi again, everybody alongside Troy Aikman and Pam Oliver. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. Troy for Brett Favre. It's one thing to wear a Vikings uniform, to then play the Packers in Minnesota, but now at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, how do you think he feels right now? Well, I think some of the things that were the most awkward or unsettling for him coming back here to Green Bay are now behind him. The bus ride into the stadium here, getting dressed in the visitor's locker room, walking down a different tunnel from the one he had experienced for 16 years. But once he gets onto the field, there is nobody that's going to be more comfortable out there than Brett Favre. 16 years to draw upon, and because of that, I think he's going to play well. Last year, the Packers turned the page at the quarterback position. Aaron Rodgers had a very nice year, his first year as a starter, and he is playing very well coming into this matchup today. Everybody wants to know how Brett Favre feels. I would argue the point that this game means more to Aaron Rodgers than it does to Brett Favre. Aaron Rodgers' career is out ahead of him, and he has a chance here today to prove that he is the future of the Green Bay Packers. But to do that, he's going to have to get better protection than what he got the first time these two teams met. Eight sacks in that ball game. He's also going to have to be willing to get rid of the football when he's under pressure. I think if he does that, he's going to have a real good shot today. Let's check in downstairs with Pam Oliver. Well, Tom, some of Favre's former teammates say this is not the time for emotion. Linebacker Aaron Campman is a regular texting buddy with Favre, but he said at this game approach, all communication ceased. Now, there hasn't been a ton of extra security added for this game. Instead, more police officers and security personnel will be shifted near the Minnesota bench to ward off any problems. Back to you. Pam, thanks so much. Green Bay has won the toss, selected to receive, so Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will get the first chance at it offensively. Amon Green just signed a week ago, 46 yards shy of becoming the Packers' all-time leading rusher. His returning kicks as a Packer today for the first time in his career. And he's out across the 20 to the 22-yard line, and that's where Aaron Rodgers and the Packers put it in play. Rodgers in his fifth year overall out of Cal, 25 years old, grew up in Chico, California. Ryan Grant coming off a 148-yard rushing day against Cleveland last week. And up front, changes at left tackle, T.J. Lang. He'll go up against Jared Allen. And Scott Wells again starts at center. the reception out of the backfield and he has a first down to the 35. Minnesota so talented defensively especially up front where Allen Kevin Williams and Pat Williams all went to the Pro Bowl a season ago an outstanding linebacking core led by E.J. Henderson they are without their all pro corner Antoine Winfield. Nowhere to run. Minnesota has been the best. That ball was already down, said the officials. Minnesota has had the best run defense in the NFL three straight seasons. Second down. Take a look here and see whether or not Ryan Grant was down, and he was not. Well, no challenge from the Minnesota sideline, and now here comes the red flag thrown by head coach Brad Childress. Well, from that initial look, let's see if we can 
Get an even better view here. It looked like the ball came out. It clearly did. Yeah, no question that the ball was was out prior to Ryan Grant going to the ground. Chad Greenway stripped it out of the hand of Ryan Grant. Ben Lieber covered it up. This is a huge call right from the get go. Forward progress is a non reviewable play. Therefore, there is no challenge by Minnesota. It will be second down. With the play clock operator, please reset the play clock to 10 seconds. Yeah, it's a good job by the officials because once they rule that forward progress has stopped, then that is not a reviewable play, as he said. So the Green Bay Packers getting a big break here early. Poon, the fullback, plows ahead of the 40 yard line. It'll bring up third down and nearly six. This is the Aaron Rodgers reception when he came on the field. You know, everybody was anxious to see what the crowd reaction would be when, when Brett Favre takes the field and when the intros were made, this place erupted for Aaron Rodgers. Third and five. Caught that's a first down for Donald Driver to the Minnesota 40 yard line. Well, a big story coming into this game is how they're going to block Jared Allen. TJ Lang making just his second NFL start, and he's not getting any help. Holds up pretty well. Aaron Rodgers then gets flushed out to his right and does a good job of connection there to Donald Driver. T.J. Lang came in and played some the last time these two teams met, did a pretty good job, but that was after Jared Allen had played about 50 defensive snaps. First down throw, batted down at the line of scrimmage, second and ten. You know, I know in visiting with Mike McCarthy coming into this game and about the eight sacks that Aaron Rodgers had the last time these two teams met, he said the game that I called should not have warranted eight sacks. And by that, what he meant was he called a game where he thought that they would protect when they needed to have the deeper drops and get the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands, you know, with some quick drops. Problem was about six of those sacks were attributed to Aaron Rodgers not getting rid of the football. Fumbled by Rodgers in the backfield, but he dives right on top of it. That'll be an eight yard loss. May have hit the foot of John Kuhn. I couldn't tell if he actually got it all the way seated in. And you, yeah, you see that you know, he's coming back to make the handoff then to Ryan Grant. He does run into John Kuhn, but that was just being somewhat careless, you know, with the football. You got to seat it into your stomach and make sure that it's not waving out there to where a fullback or anyone else can knock it out of your hand. Third and 17, they need to get to the Minnesota 30 to convert on this third down. Ball hit as he threw by Ray Edwards. And the opening possession for the Packers stalls at midfield. I'll tell you, so much of the attention is on Jared Allen because of the fact that of those eight sacks, he had four and a half of them. Ray Edwards did a heck of a job in that game as well of getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Jamar Johnson standing back at his own 10 yard line. He'll come up to get it to the 15 and has dropped it to 17. So that means here comes Brett Favre in the Minnesota offense.
Adrian Peterson back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up a yard. There's Brett Favre, 40 years old, out of Kill, Mississippi, drafted in the second round in 91 by Atlanta. After one year, was traded to Green Bay, became the Packers' starting quarterback in week four of the 92 season, and has now started every game since. A favorable spot, a three-yard gain for Peterson, second and seven. Rookie Percy Harvin out of the backfield, and he's out to the 24-yard line. A third down upcoming for Favre and the Vikings. Of course, Peterson a season ago led the NFL in rushing. Bernard Berrien did not practice all week with an injured hamstring, but he's in the lineup. So many weapons and an outstanding offensive line. First down reception and out to the 45 yard line is Chester Taylor. Green Bay Packers last time didn't bring much pressure, but they are here on the first third down of the game. They're going to bring the linebackers up the middle. The Vikings do a good job of picking that up. And then Chester Taylor is able to get inside position. And a big first down there for the Minnesota Vikings. Gain of 20 in on first down. Peterson back in the game. And he's to the 45. That'll be a pickup of two. Green Bay defensively. The third ranked defensive unit in the NFL. They went from a 4-3 to a 3-4 when Dom Capers arrived as defensive coordinator. Yeah, and I think the area where they have improved the most is in their run defense. And a lot of that has been because of the play of those three guys that we showed up front. Ryan Pickett, Colin Jenkins, and Johnny Jolly. They've been very stubborn in allowing much rushing yards by these opposing offenses. Coming down the line to make the tackle, Clay Matthews. The number one pick out of USC. He took over as a starter the first game against Minnesota, and he's been making plays ever since. Clay Matthews, yeah, he's a talented guy, and he got the start a few weeks ago, and He's really making the most of it. He's very quick, strong. He can do it all. He's a versatile player. Third and nine. <laughs> Minnesota punts. Excellent coverage by the nickelback, Tremont Williams. By Bernard Berrien. We got Tremont Williams. They like this matchup here with Bernard Berrien. They go to three wide receiver. It brings Tremont Williams onto the field at an opportunity. And that was the one area, third down conversions, that really hurt this Green Bay team four weeks ago. So for them to be able to make a stop and get off the field is big. Chris Cluey puts a foot on it. And that is well into the end zone. So the Packers get it for the second time when we return. At their own 20. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. Well, if you'd like to see what Brett Favre is doing literally every second of this game, well, we have a camera trained on him all day, and you can check out the Favre cam at NFL.com or FoxSports.com. Midway through the opening quarter, Aaron Rodgers looking for the big one down the field, throws into coverage, double coverage, and nearly intercepted by the strong safety Tyrell Johnson. He had an eye on Greg Jennings, and that's a guy that Aaron Rodgers told us he'd like to get more involved in the game today. <laughs> yeah, well, he might want to wait until he's single covered and doesn't have two guys on him. You know, they go play action and think maybe they'll have a chance for 
for something big down the field, but the Vikings were not full. Second and ten, a screen to Ryan Grant. And sniffed out beautifully by Greenways, playing like a pro bowler. I mean, weather-wise, you can't ask for a more glorious afternoon. Temperatures just shy of 50 degrees. Clear skies. It's going to be chilly as the game goes on, but for the first day of November, mighty nice. Third and 13, Rodgers throws high. Three and out this time for Green Bay on offense. I'll tell you what, Tom, coming into this game, I really thought that based on the pressure that the Vikings were able to get on Aaron Rodgers in that last game, that they would come out, the Packers, that is, would come out and really help those offensive tackles so far in just the two offensive series that we've seen. They've not had any help. It's been one-on-one -on -one outside on the edge. And he's gotten pretty good protection, and that's going to be a real key whether or not these guys can hold up as we move through this game. Jeremy Capados punts it away. And slipping one tackle is Jamar Johnson, and he's dropped to the 38 yard line. Early adjustments with the equipment on the Minnesota sideline. Farm and company back at it in a moment. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. Perhaps somewhat lost in all the Brett Favre hype returning to Lambeau Field in Green Bay is the importance of this game in the NFC North. Minnesota already a win over Green Bay this season. And should they win again, in essence, it's a three-game divisional lead. Ball is loose. Still loose. And it looks like the Packers have it in the 20. They do. Tom, it didn't look like Farr was even expecting the snap. You're going to see he's he's checking out the defense. He makes a protection call, and John Sullivan, the center, thought that he was calling for the snap, and it came without Farr even being prepared. So a turnover, the 7:03 mark. Rodgers and the Packers at the 20-yard line, 21-yard line. They give it to Grant, cuts it back to the inside and bangs his way inside the 15. You can see Favre as he right there he, it's a little bit of a fake snap and then he comes up to, to change protection call and, and that's the thing that's interesting is they're working off of a silent count so anything that Favre said in terms of trying to get the offensive line directed for protection should not have then caused Sullivan to snap the ball they pitch it to Grant and he is slammed down at the 17 yard line by the two time pro bowler Jared Allen. His first season as a Viking last year, 14 and a half sacks. And we mentioned in the first meeting between these two teams, look at those numbers. Well, and those numbers are pretty indicative of what he's done all year. You know, they always say, hey, sacks don't tell the whole story when you're talking about a guy's play. And they're right when they say that about Jared Allen. He's done a lot more than just sack the quarterback. on third and five rolls and down he goes that'll be a loss of two 
So after getting the turnover at the 21 yard line, they get a nine yard run. And then a couple of big losses and out comes a field goal unit led by Mason Crosby. Well the Minnesota Vikings have done a great job this year of keeping people out of the end zone. They lead the NFL in red zone defense. That was a huge stop giving the Packers the short field and not allowing them to get into the end zone. 37 yard field goal try is good by Crosby. The Green Bay leading three nothing and certainly Mike McCarthy wanted better than just the field goal. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Hyundai Assurance. A little certainty in uncertain times. By Domino's new mix and match deal. And by Windows 7, your PC simplified. A golden chance for the Packers to jump in front by a touchdown after the turnover. But it turns into a 37-yard field goal by Crosby. So now the electrifying rookie out of the University of Florida, Percy Harvin, brings it across the 30. Harvin already a pair of touchdown returns this season. Inside the 30, inside the 20, all the way down to the 14. He's brought one back from 101 yards, another back for 88 yards, and nearly the distance here. And the reason why he's so good at it, Tom, is he really presses the hole. A lot of these guys that return kicks, they want to get to the sideline, not Percy Harvin. He immediately takes it north and south. He gets one-on-one -on, -one on the kicker, and then it's just a foot race as to whether or not he can get to the end zone. But there's not a lot of jitterbug in Percy Harvin when he takes the ball and has it in his hands. So now five up under center. At the 14, he'll give it to Peterson. Slips behind a couple of blockers. He's down to the nine. I mean, the special teams for the Minnesota Vikings has improved dramatically from where it was a year ago. Big reason for that, obviously, the addition of Percy Harvin. Think back to last week. You know, the, the strip fumble that Pittsburgh gets, they go in for the touchdown, and then boom, they come right back, Minnesota does, with a return by Percy Harvin. You know, he is a great weapon, not only in the return game, but also on this offense. A little delay to Peterson. And maybe picked up a yard. Good play by Ryan Pickett, the nose tackle, to wrap him up. Boy, it sure was because he went right through the center and just pushed him right back. You can see he goes right through him and then is able to make a play on Adrian Peterson. And that's really the key when you think about why Green Bay had success the last time these two teams played is because they never really allowed Adrian Peterson to get any kind of room in front of him. And you got to hit him immediately. Taylor, great open field tackle made by Nick Barnett. And now a flag comes in. Some extracurricular activity after the tackle was made over on the far side of the field. Looked like Johnny Jolly got tangled up with Anthony Herrera. At the Herrera. conclusion of all the action, in the dead ball period, personal foul, headbutt, defense number 97. This penalty be assessed half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. What a huge mistake that is by Johnny Jolly. Boy, it's such a great defensive stop. Nick Barnett out there one on one on Chester Taylor, and then you've got a penalty like that with Johnny Jolly. Here's Johnny Jolly right here. Well, clearly there was some jawing going on, but with Jolly turned around, he headbutted Chester Taylor. Yeah, there's always a little jawing going on. You got to show a little restraint. Peterson. 
He's dropped at the 10 yard line. Boy, very good tackling early on in this game by Green Bay defensively. That time it was Al Harris. Well, we know what Adrian Peterson is all about. I mean, this guy is an absolute horse, and he is hard to get on the ground. But as I said, if you can get him running laterally and you can pressure him at the line of scrimmage, you've got a chance. And even then, it's not a great chance because we, we, we've seen him a lot of times just lower his shoulder and run over people as well. Ask William Gay. <laughs> Peterson inside the five down to the two yard line. It'll bring up third and goal for Minnesota. And look at this hole right here and what happens with the lane for Adrian Peterson. I mean pretty good. And that's that's what they've been able to avoid in the previous matchup. Third and goal, just outside the two. They run it very close to the goal line. Peterson appears to be short, so now a decision. For Brad Childress, does he go fourth and goal inside the one? Well, they've made their decision, and, and I happen to agree with them. I, I just think that when you have the the offensive line that you have with Minnesota, and you've got the tailback with Adrian Peterson, you'd like to think you can pick up a yard. And I would think they'd run behind that left side. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown Adrian Peterson. So after struggling so mightily inside the red zone a week ago against Pittsburgh, two big turnovers, going on fourth down, and unable to get in, they do so today. I guess just enough, Adrian Peterson decides to try to go over the top. The ball breaks the plane. And I think that's a lot of the reason as to why you go for it today. Big game. Show your offensive group you got confidence in, in them coming back this week and punching it in. Point after a good by Ryan Longwell, another former Packer. But that scoring drive began with Percy Harvin's 77-yard kickoff return, capped off by the one-yard dive from Peterson. 7-0 Vikings. Not only the big return by Harvin, but the penalty personal foul against Johnny Jolly. And penalties have killed this Packer team frequently. Third most penalized team in the entire NFL so far this year. Amon Green from the goal line. And Green with some daylight. He's out to the 32 and a flag comes down. During the return of the kick, holding, receiving team number 51. 10-yard penalty, first down. So in his return to Lambeau Field, Brett Favre celebrates a Minnesota Vikings touchdown. One eleven to play in the opening quarter from Lambeau Field in Green Bay in Minnesota. 7-3 lead over the Packers. Aaron Rodgers hands it to Ryan Grant. Cuts it back to the inside. He's up to the 21-yard line. A good gain on first down for Grant. What a day of action in the NFL and in Major League Baseball on this Sunday, November the 1st. Coming up next, it'll be game four of the World Series. The Yankees leading two games to one. CC Sabathia again comes back on three days rest. Has been lights out in the postseason. And he'll be opposed by Joe Blanton. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, Ken Rosenthal and company standing by in Philadelphia. Juggled and then did Johnson catch it? Yes, he did.
two yards short of a first down, but a pretty nifty reception there by the rookie out of LSU. Boy, it sure was. It should not have been as difficult as what he made it look. I mean, a perfectly thrown pass there by Aaron Rodgers hits him in stride. He would be able to turn up the field and get some extra yardage, but you know he hangs with it. He was able to haul it in. That'll be the final play of the opening quarter. Red Farm and the Vikings leading the Packers 7-3. The NFL on Fox continues after a word from your local Fox station. Third down and a long yard for the Packers. And Rodgers out of the shotgun, fakes it, and is looking down the field, being chased by Edwards, who got him all the way back to the 17. Eight times he was sacked in the first meeting. And Edwards gets him here on a critical third down. Well, they go off play action and trying to get the ball to Donald Driver. E.J. Henderson knocks him off course, but it was good coverage all the way around, even when Aaron came off of Donald Driver and then tried to go elsewhere with the football. There was just nowhere for him to throw it. Now, he can't take that sack. I mean, he just throw it away. If nothing else, I mean, you're giving up yardage on field position. Neymar Johnson from the 28-yard line, and a pretty good return. Already had a big kickoff return, 77 yards by Harvin. And this return by Johnson brings it out to the 49-yard line. Five so far, three of four, 18 yards without a touchdown or an interception. You know, Tom, when, when I was with the Cowboys and we would play the Packers with Brett Favre in big games, big playoff games, we always felt that we had to get out on them pretty early because Favre would come into the game with so much adrenaline, he'd have a hard time calming himself down. He'd miss a large percentage of his passes early in games. Next time, next time. That didn't happen the last time these two teams met, and it hasn't happened here today. And the reason is they really haven't had to throw anything down the field. Peterson for a couple of yards. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Game break time and head back to Los Angeles. And the Carolina Panthers have kept it on the ground against Arizona. This is the second touchdown of the day for Jonathan Stewart. 126 yards rushing in the first quarter for the Panthers. They just started the second. Carolina's up 14-7 over the Cardinals. Tom Troy and Pan. Kurt, thank you very much. Arizona coming off a very impressive win against the Giants last week. Far throws, catch made by Sidney Rice, who's had back-to-back -back monster games. 312 receiving yards the last two Sundays. Back-to-back 100-plus -back yard games. Sidney Rice was a young guy when he came into this league, just 20 years old, had a good rookie season. And then last year, his sophomore year, had to battle some knee injuries, didn't have the season that he had hoped for. Came back this year, and right from the beginning, he and Brett Favre have had a real connection. Third and four, blitz coming. Favre gets it away. Catch made by Harvin, and he's down to the 34-yard line. It's either been Harvin or Chester Taylor. Better than 50% of the time on third down throws by far. And a lot of underneath throws and allowing Brett Favre to really kind of settle in. And the Packers are trying to bring pressure. They're trying to mix it up. They know they've got to get him out of his comfort zone, but yet they've not been able to get home on Brett Favre. You know, right now, I mean, talk about how Brett King felt coming into this ball game and all the emotion and what have you. Right now, he's got to be as comfortable as he's ever been. A guy who won 76% of his games here at Lambeau over a 16-year period. Pump fake one way and throws the other way, and a catch is made by Varian inside the 25, and that'll be another Minnesota first down. Aaron Campman, they're running a lot of nickel packages, which is getting Aaron Campman as a rush in. You know, Favre worked his way. He's able to get a hit on him, and that was one of the few times here in the early going they've gotten pressure on number four. Back to the ground game, back to Adrian Peterson. And he ducks underneath a couple of tackles, and we'll see where they spot it. That'll be at the 19-yard line. That hit, you just saw it a moment ago. Well, there's so many ways that the Minnesota Vikings can come at you. You know, you think about the last time these two teams played and being able to hold 
Adrian Peterson to under three yards per carry, but yet they didn't get to Brett Favre, and he throws for 270 yards. And, you know, they are able to win in ways that, quite simply, they couldn't do in previous years. Favre appeared to underthrow that ball, and it was still caught by Rice. Boy, does he have some hands. And that's what Brett Favre likes so much about him. Not a real speed guy, but if you don't respect him, he can run by you, but he has great athleticism and the ability to make some really tough catches. And this is a ball that's just not very well thrown, but great extension there by Sidney Rice hauling that in. First down at the Green Bay 12 for Brett Favre and the Vikings. Seventh play of the drive. Favre guns it over the middle. It's caught and into the end zone for Vasante Shanko. He might be 40, but after getting his arm surgically repaired at the end of last season, Favre is throwing bullets again. He's trying to get the ball to Klein Saucer in the back of the end zone. But a good job right there by Vasante Shanko. You see him hook up, and then he is able to get separation and good timing there with Paul. Point after is good. Shanko, his ninth touchdown in the last 12 games. He's become a big target for Brett Favre, his first touchdown pass of the afternoon. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by The Blind Side, starring Sandra Bullock in theaters everywhere November 20th. By Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by Ford. Drive one. Fourteen three, Minnesota leading Green Bay. 10-42 to play until halftime. Short kick by Longwell and sliding to get it as Amon Green gets to his feet. And not a bad return out to the 23. Aaron Rodgers and company trying to answer, needing points. Back to August the 18th when Brett Favre made the decision for a second straight year to come out of retirement. Signing with the Minnesota Vikings and everybody grabbed their schedule and looked to see when Minnesota was playing in Green Bay. Well, here we are on November the 1st. Favre has thrown a touchdown pass and his team leads 14 to 3. Rodgers again under huge pressure. And Jared Allen got him. That's three sacks already for Minnesota. It's like Jared Allen takes an inside move on T.J. Lang. You know, he starts him up the field with the bull rush, comes underneath there as soon as Aaron Rodgers tries to escape. And, I mean, this guy, when they played a year ago, the Packers against the Vikings, Aaron Rodgers in week one did not have a sack. The second time they played, he had one sack and really didn't do much. And I think they underestimated how good this guy was. But after his last game a month ago, they shouldn't be underestimating him here today. They give it to Amon Green, his first carry since being signed two weeks ago. And we came in talking about the sacks by Aaron Rodgers. He's been sacked 25 times coming into this game. 19 of those, Tom. On first or second down and a number of those are balls that he can get out of his hands and when you have a sack on early downs you're looking at third and 18 it's hard to convert those in essence they're a turnover without giving the opposing team a short field Rodgers throws and batted down laying out to get a paw and it was Greenway number one pick in 2006 and playing like a pro bowler this year. I think the linebackers for the Minnesota Vikings are as good a trio as any set of linebackers across the league. Chad Greenway, 
playing outstanding Ben Lieber and then of course the guy in the middle E.J. Henderson who's not back to full speed from his knee injury from a year ago but that's an awfully solid group. Minnesota figures to get great field position and dropped at the 47 after coming up to make the catch was Johnson. Only needing 58 yards total on their last two possessions to score two touchdowns. Peterson into the open field and still on his feet inside the 30 and finally caught by Al Harris close to the 15 yard line. Looked like Peterson wanted to start backside and then he sees this hole that takes him to the front side of the play. Initially, he takes a peek back there, and then he sees that hole open up off of Steve Hutchinson's block. And that's when he gets dangerous. I mean, once you see Adrian Peterson out in the open field with that kind of space where he's got a two-way go, that's actually a pretty good job there by Nick Collins, being able to at least slow him down enough to get a little help from the others. 12 carries, 53 yards for Peterson. 33 of those yards coming on that run. Met at the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up one. Of course, Peterson last year, the first Minnesota Vikings running back to lead the league in rushing, 1,760 yards. And in his first two years in a league, he's gone for over 3,000. Well, I'll tell you what, they, the Packers came into this game wanting to get Brett Favre out of his comfort level. They haven't done that. And now they combine that and they start getting Adrian Peterson going. They really got some problems on their hands. They give it to Harvin. And he carries down to the 11. Percy Harvin is eighth rush of the year. I'll tell you what, Tom. I mean, it's early. But as we sit here, this is this is a huge third down for it being this early in this ball game because giving up three points, I mean, you, you can at least deal with that. But on this drive, based on what's happened up to this point, I don't think the Green Bay Packers can afford to give up seven points on three consecutive drives. Third and six. Complete. He had an eye on Berrien. Berrien wanted a flag. Pretty good route there by Bernard Berrien and good coverage also by Charles Woodson. Bernard Berrien's the inside receiver and he's going to run a he's going to run a little out and then take the post. And Charles Woodson stays with him pretty good there. I didn't see a, I didn't see anything that was worthy of pass interference. Well, you said the Packers needed to stop. And they deny the pass to the end zone by five. So now Longwell on for a 29 yard field goal try. And flags litter the field. This could be a big call here. If this is against Green Bay, that would make it a fourth and one. And maybe Brad Childress thinks about going for it. Well, that'd be the second time that the Packers had made a stop defensively and then gave up, you know, yardage because neutral of the neutral zone infraction defense stepped into the neutral zone, causing an offensive player to fall start. Five yard penalty will remain fourth down. I gotta tell you, it's a good call. Well, let's see now what Brad Childress decides to do. We've seen him go for it already on fourth and one. That was at the one yard line when Peterson had the touchdown. And he wants him to measure it. He wants to know exactly how far away he's going to be. And he, he can get that. I mean, on fourth down, you can ask for a measurement. You can ask for a measurement and get that if, it, if it's fourth and one or less. Well, Childress spends a timeout. The first use in the half by the Vikings and his decision when we come back. And apparently we're going to keep it right here 
as Childress is, is probably saying to the referee, hey, look, I shouldn't be charged with a timeout here, right? There's no question. The, the way that it is told to the coaches is going from third to fourth down, if it's one yard or less, they can ask for a measurement, even though the officials know that it's not a first down, they should be granted that measurement. It's still fourth down, in my opinion, they should still be granted that measurement and not be charged with a timeout. Brad Childress going fourth and one. I tell you, I, I wouldn't, it'd be an awful gutsy call, but a play action here, you'd think would be wide open. I'm not sure if Peterson got it. They elected to run the ball rather than play action, and Peterson is denied the first down. What a huge swing for Green Bay. Boy, you're not kidding. You look back now at the penalty on Michael Montgomery, and it ended up being a good thing for the Green Bay Packers. The Vikings decide to go for it on fourth and short. They come up short and denied any points. Good job by that defensive front of the Green Bay Packers. Just hanging in there and not allowing any movement whatsoever. Now with 6.53 to play until halftime. Rodgers up against the five-yard line. This drive starts at the eight. And they give it to Grant trying to break it to the outside. And is run out of bounds by Benny Sapp. Flagged down on the field. Holding offense number 78. This penalty will be assessed half the distance of the goal. Still first down. Yeah, that's the front side, right tackle Allen Barber. You see him there, number 78. And he's trying to block the point along with Donald Lee. In the right hand. I mean, I think he could have taken his hand off and it wouldn't have affected the play whatsoever. They give it to Kuhn, and he's out close to the original line of scrimmage. And this Minnesota defense is really doing a good job here in the first half, and I know coming into the game, you, you look at this as to where the matchups are favorable maybe to Green Bay, and I think if you, if you look at Green Bay's perimeter players against the secondary of Minnesota, you'd say, wow, we should be able to get some things on them, especially when you consider the fact they're without their Pro Bowl corner Antoine Winfield and yet they've not been able to get any play Rogers will run it and caught from behind by Kevin Williams so it's three and out again for Green Bay what a great job by Kevin Williams the pursuit that he has he's going to come up the field and he just stays with it and once he sees Aaron Rodgers take off out of the pocket, you know, to be able to run him down, Aaron Rodgers is an awfully nifty runner. You know, he's the second leading rusher on this team. But great hustle play by Kevin Williams. So after the penalty, it's third down and three. And Rodgers looking around, flag down, completion made across the middle to Jennings. He has a first down out to the 31-yard line, but again, there are flags all over, three of them. against both teams that will offset holding defense number 23 holding offense number 70 by rule these penalties offset replay third down well here's the penalty on Cedric Griffin on the outside the grab and then TJ Lang number 70 you got Jared Allen who came all the way across and then as Kevin Williams tried to come around that's when T.J. Lang grabbed hold. Well, you just get the feeling, Troy, that Green Bay has to get a first down here to get any momentum at all. J. 
Juggling the football was Driver. Rodgers back to break the Driver. And it is a reception, and that is the much needed first down. It was a little more contested than what Aaron Rodgers thought it would be. Jimmy Kennedy, you're going to see him drop underneath. Actually, it was the opposite defensive tackle, but he drops underneath that, and then he becomes a part of pass coverage. But you're right, Tom. I mean, a first down, something that they desperately needed to get something positive going here in the second quarter. Well, the Packers have a grand total of 48 yards of offense. So far in this opening half, Grant picks up maybe two. Well, you talk about this Minnesota run defense. Grant was the last individual running back to rush for better than 100 yards in a game against the Vikings. You've got to go all the way back to 2007 since that has happened. And the Vikings' current streak of 30 consecutive games not allowing a 100-yard rusher, the longest in the NFL. Well, Ryan Grant has had a lot of good days against this Minnesota team. Very few running backs have, but he's not having one of them here in this first half. They fake it to Grant before Rodgers can even look up. He is sacked again. Fourth time in the game. Pat Williams got him this time. I think of Pat Williams is primarily a run guy, which he is, but he's also able to get a pretty good push in the middle, especially when You've got Wells who pretty much just let him go. And Pat Williams, you know, in a lot of ways, you talk about the Iron Man, Brett Favre, and all the games that he has played in. Here Pat Williams is, is in, in his 13th season, a guy who constantly gets double teamed. And yet at 37 years old, he's still playing at a pretty good, a pretty good level. Not quite the player that he was a few years back, but still a force. Third and 12. Rodgers steps up, throws too tall. Rodgers passing to Peter Jones. Well, Brett Favre's going to get it back one more time, barring a turnover on the upcoming punt. Yeah, they get a good break defensively, and they're able to give the ball to their offense, and, and the offense is just completely out of sync. I mean, this is a group that has gotten better each week. One of the more productive offensive units in football, but they just haven't been able to get into a rhythm. Johnson cuts it back up and brings it out to the 40 yard line. Well, it's shaping up to be one perhaps for the ages. A fall classic has been just that so far. The Phillies and Yankees splitting the first two games in the Bronx. Game three, the Bombers powered their way to a 2 1 series lead. Coverage of game four coming up tonight from Philadelphia. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, and high definition only on Fox. Big sports day in Philadelphia with the big win oh. the Eagles had over the Giants. And, and then a walk across the way and go take in the World Series game. Pretty good tailgate day there. Not bad. bad. Not bad. Five on first down. The quick hit to Rice. He's across midfield, and that's a first down to the 47. That should take us down to the two-minute warning as Favre is in no hurry to bring his team up to the line of scrimmage. Vikings lead 14-3, looking for more before halftime. A dominant second quarter for Minnesota, both offensively and Defensively, Favre is hit on 9 of 11, 77 yards and a touchdown. And Sidney Rice at the bottom of your screen. And they hand it off to Peterson on first down. And he's to the 41. We're under two minutes. Minnesota trying to add to a 14-3 lead. The Vikings have two timeouts remaining. Yeah, with two timeouts and where they're at on the field. I mean, they've got the they've got the whole playbook. At, at their disposal and uh, and still in, in no type of hurry up. In fact, they're still huddling up here and and a lot of time. Quick throw to Harvin bounces off one tackle and lunges forward for a first down. 
Yeah, that's one of the things that that Brett Favre has really brought to this offense. A lot of teams do it. The Vikings did it in the past, but Brett does it probably more than any other quarterback. A lot of those types of throws aren't even called. If he sees a defensive back off, he'll just pull up, make eye contact, and deliver the receiver the ball, especially if it's Percy Harvin. Rice to the 22, another first down. Pretty tight window right there. That shows you Brett Favre hasn't lost anything on his fastball. Sidney Rice on the slant, and a good catch by him. And we're getting used to seeing that here in the early going of this season and the job that he has done. You know, he's a big target. And the confidence that Favre has in him is, is really pretty remarkable. I mean, when, when you consider the fact that Brett Favre missed all of the offseason work, missed all of training camp, and you step in, and, and as a former quarterback, you say, how can you develop that type of timing and chemistry with a receiver in such short time? And I don't know that Favre really needs a lot of timing within the passing game to where, you know, so much about his game is, you know, hey, you beat that guy. Let me, let me figure out how I'm going to get it to you. And he's done a great job of it. Minnesota spending a timeout, 48 seconds to go until halftime. And coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, the entire gang in L.A. will have the scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up-to-the-second statistics. First down at the 22. Blitz coming, they pick it up, far throws off the fingertips of Harvin. It's been a very interesting relationship that has developed between Favre and Harvin. You know, there's a 19-year difference in age. Favre, theoretically, is old enough to be his dad. And, and Percy laughs. He says, you know, uh, he's taken me under his wing. He has taught me so much about the game in such a short amount of time. People are surprised when they hear that. He's taught a lot of these guys a lot of football in a short period of time. Surprising call there on second down. They hand it off to Chester Taylor. Clock rolling under 35 seconds. Minnesota has one timeout left. Well, good play there by Nick Barnett. Being able to make the stop on Chester Taylor, the Vikings... You know, obviously in passing situations, knowing that the Packers are expecting that, tried to sneak a draw in. Five. Lays it off for Taylor, who dropped it at the 20. I tell you, I'm, I, I'm a little surprised uh, by the approach there by Minnesota. You know, they let the clock go down. They wanted to make sure that this was going to be the last possession or not at least leave much time for the Green Bay Packers. But they, they weren't real aggressive in terms of Forcing their hand to come away with a touchdown on that particular drive. Will be a 41 yard field goal try for Ryan Longwell. Good snap, good hold, and as Longwell did for so many years wearing a Packer uniform, he bangs it right down the middle. So here we are with nine seconds left to play until halftime 17 to 3. Minnesota in front and you know Troy overall Brett Favre all the hype all the build up coming back here to play against his former team where he started for 16 years you made a comment in between a commercial break you know they really haven't had to do a whole lot offensively they've had great field position and they have managed very well this opening half yeah I mean they've been able to move the ball they've been able to make plays and that's what we're not getting from the Green Bay Packers I mean I, there's no doubt that the Packers came into this game knowing what they were able to do the first time these two teams met they had a lot of success in terms of moving the football but they have just not been able to sustain anything I mean they haven't been able to run the ball and more than that they haven't been able to throw it because they haven't been able to provide much protection for Aaron Rodgers, so they haven't been able to take advantage of some of the matchups that they like there on the perimeter. Rodgers was sacked eight times in the first meeting between these two teams. He's already been sacked four times through a half here today. Ahmad Green still on his feet. He's out to the 33 yard line, and that will watch the clock stop with two seconds left. Oh, 
Well, when Brett Flair first came out, a lot of booze, some cheers, that boyish grin and smile that we've seen going all the way back to 92. And after an early miscue, very few mistakes ever since. Yeah, I mean, his center, John Sullivan, is the only guy or the only thing that's made him uncomfortable so far since this game started. <laughs> You know, I mean, the Packers haven't applied any pressure on him. And with a 14-point lead, he's feeling pretty good right now going in at half. Well, that pretty much is indicative of the opening half for the Packers. They stumble their way through this opening half on this November the 1st under a harvest moon. Aaron Rodgers up against Brett Favre. It's 17-3, Vikings over the Packers in NFL on Fox continues after a word from your local Fox station. Minnesota will get the football to begin the second half, leading 17 to 3. Here are the key yellow book moments to look for in the second half. Troy Aikman. Yeah, you take a look at it in the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, all they really have to do is continue to do what they did there in the first half, and that is dominate the line of scrimmage. And then, of course, if the Packers have any chance of getting into this game and going on to win in this game, they have got to be able to give Aaron Rodgers more time to throw the football. Well, the Packers offensively, one of the worst first halves of football in recent memory. Harvin gaining a little momentum from the 12, and he's still on his feet going the other way. And all the way out to the 37-yard line. Let's check in downstairs with Pam Oliver. Well, Tom, Mike McCarthy was talking offense when I spoke to him at halftime. He said, you know what, we got to get some rhythm going, run the ball better, maybe go with some three-step drops. Meantime, Brad Childress was talking about playing sound football. He said, we need to take care of the ball, keep our quarterback clean, and also play more aggressive. Back to you. Well, he we talked about the offense, Pam, and you just mentioned it, Mike McCarthy talking offense and not talking about 47 yards and a half. The fewest since 1999 in a first half of football by a Green Bay Packer team. Meanwhile, the numbers on Brett Favre, they're not spectacular, but solid. No, they're solid, and they're solid because he was able to get into a comfort level early in this ball game and just complete some high percentage passes. And we saw it earlier, they only knocked him down one time. And they just have not gotten pressure on him. That was a point of emphasis coming into this game based on what happened the last time they met. But yet the results have been the same. Adrian Peterson off the right side. Flags come in very late. Carries out to the 42. And again, we wait on the flag. Holding, Holding. offense number 76. 10 yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Yeah, Steve Hutchinson, the left guard here, and the play is going to be front side. But in order to try to cut off Colin Jenkins, that's a hard block. And Steve Hutchinson is about as good as there is at the guard position. But when you're trying to get a guy who's slanting away and get in front of him, that's, that's asking a lot. Five on second down, throws to the far side. And incomplete, he was looking for Sidney Rice. Good coverage out there by Tremont Williams. You know, Green Bay, throughout this ball game, we've seen them in a lot of sub-defenses, and by that I mean five defensive backs. And you expect that whenever the Vikings come out with three wide receivers. But yet the Green Bay Packers are running their five defensive back packages even against the Vikings two tight end sets which is somewhat unusual since that's a running formation. Third and 17 a three man rush and Favre's going to pick that apart all day long. Well you called it Tom I mean rather than bring pressure on third and long 
and make him get the ball out of his hands and then come up and make a tackle short of the first down. They go with a three man rush and in essence I mean Johnny Jolly is no factor is a two man rush. And they've seen this before. I mean if you give any quarterback let alone Brett Favre that kind of time it's over. Variant took a shot from Atari Bigby. They want to see if he's OK after that first down reception out to midfield. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. By AT&T, your world delivered. By Walmart, save money, live better. Walmart. And by McDonald's. It took Bernard Berry in a minute or two to gather his wits after taking that hit from Atari Bigby. It appears to be all right. Favre and the Vikings at midfield on first down. And Favre to throw it. Unbelievable protection. Throws into traffic. The catch made by Harvin. He cuts it back the other way and into the end zone. Touchdown, Percy Harvin. Fifty one yards on the pass play from the veteran five to the rookie Percy Harvin yeah, and the Packers played coverage again in an attempt not to give up the big play and, and as a result Favre has a little bit of time. I mean there's a little pressure up inside but you see he's able to stay there and deliver it. Percy Harvin working inside they've got some defenders there. He just goes up and makes the play. I mean he makes the play on the ball. No one else does. And then it's Keystone Cops. Two Packers colliding there. It looked like Nick Collins, who is down on the field injured, got cut by his own man in trying to converge on Percy Harvin. And could read his lips. He said, I'm all right. But the Packers are definitely not all right. You're going to see Nick Collins come into your screen, and this is how he gets hurt. You know, just the way that he came down. But on the outside, Tremont Williams, I mean, he jumps to the outside and just gave Percy Harvin just a straight shot at the goal line. I mean, that playing coverage and then to give up a play like that and have four defenders down there to get him to the ground and nobody even lay a hand on him is not very good. A lot of people thought Harvin had the greatest potential of any player coming out in last year's draft a 51 yard touchdown reception the lead swells to 21. Minnesota leading 24 three after the 51 yard touchdown catch by the rookie Percy Harvin. Green Bay defense which came in ranked third overall in the NFL and some might say you know, perhaps a bit misleading. Troy, much like the New York Giants game we did three weeks ago when they had played three teams before going down to New Orleans that had one win, those three teams combined. Here the last couple of weeks, Green Bay has gotten right against Detroit and Cleveland, but they're playing a very different animal in the Minnesota Vikings here today. Yeah, it seems that we're saying that about a lot of teams that have pretty good records and you then you begin to question maybe who they had played and hey, we knew that the Lions and the Browns aren't very good, but those were nice wins. They can't help who's on their schedule. They dominated those games. Defense didn't give up a touchdown in either one of those games, but the Vikings aren't the Browns or the Lions and they're showing that here tonight. Avon Green waiting on the kick from Longwell who appeared to lose his footing as he struck the ball. But Green from the two. And Amon still on his feet all the way out to the 30 yard line. Defense looking for answers for Green Bay. What about the offense? 47 yards of offense in the opening half. 
Yeah, but I would look at the Packers defensively right now. I mean, for the Vikings to get the ball to start this second half, for them to go right down the field and score, I mean, they have not been able to get any pressure on Brett Favre. We've documented that throughout this ball game, but yet they're not doing anything differently. They've got two of the best corners in all of football. You know, you can man up with those guys. They afford you the luxury of bring, being able to bring extra defenders, and yet for whatever reason, Dom Capers refuses to do that. Rodgers will put it up, and a wide-open receiver is Greg Jennings all the way down to the Minnesota 40-yard line. So that's a good start for Rodgers. Well, they find the hole in the zone. It's a cover two defense in the secondary for Minnesota, and there on the sideline, about 18 yards is where the void is then in front of that safety. And looky there, Aaron Rodgers has time to make that throw, and as a result, it's a pretty easy completion. 47 yards of offense in the first half, 30 plays on that completion to begin the second half. Ran a very quiet first half, and of course that is the case more times than not for most rushers against the Minnesota Vikings defense. Well, and let's be honest. I mean, this this is a difficult situation for this Packers offensive line. It's been in a state of flux all year long. The right side with their right guard, Josh Sitton, and then the right tackle, Alan Barber, are the only two guys who have started the same position, you know, throughout the season in all six games, seven games now. And that left side has had a lot of changes. Chad Clifton, their 10-year veteran left tackle. A couple of times has injured his ankle this year. He did not play last week. T.J. Lang got the start, played very well. And then Scott Wells, who lost his job at center to Jason Spitz during the preseason, has had to fill in for Spitz, who's battled a bad back. Third and five. Rodgers looking, has room to get a first down and does. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 29-yard line. You know, on the other side, you've got the Minnesota Vikings. They bring a four-man rush. And Brian Robinson, he's going to be able to get some pressure. They run a twist on that left side, and he's the one who flushes Aaron Rodgers out. Now, as I said earlier, Aaron Rodgers can run. And so because of his legs, he's able to pick up the first down. But that's been the biggest difference is – the Vikings have been able to get pressure with their front four, and yet they've still brought extra people. But with a four-man rush, you're able to play coverage. And, and Aaron Rodgers, for the most part, even when he has had time, which has not been a lot, he hasn't had anywhere to go with the ball. Got hit as soon as he threw, and a flag comes down. The rookie, Asher Allen, on the coverage there of Donald Driver. Yeah. Donald's trying to come out on the out route, and, and that's a pretty easy call. Pass Allen. Interference, defense number 21, automatic first down. You know, Allen, the rookie out of Georgia, got his first action last week and just playing in his second NFL game. But those are the matchups that that Green Bay looks at and says, hey, you know, we like that. And, and they're playing without Antoine Winfield. The Minnesota Vikings are. And so what was already favorable in their opinion is even more so. You got a shot there to the face of Aaron Rodgers. Could have certainly gotten a flag on that. Lays it off for Kuhn out of the backfield. And Greenway runs him out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Ray Edwards got tangled up with Allen Barber. And now... A few barbs back and forth between the two teams. So you've got Aaron Rodgers who now has some time in the pocket. Donald Driver in the slot. He's going up the seam and just good coverage. You got the safety collapsing on it. E.J. Henderson running underneath. Nowhere to go then for Aaron Rodgers and you've got to come underneath. I mean, I know people at home are wondering, all right, well, he got some time to throw the ball there. How come we're still coming underneath? The Vikings are doing a good job in coverage.
Play clock nearly expiring and Rodgers having to spend the first time out for the Packers. Knocking on the door trying to get back in his game and we have a long way to go at Lambeau Field. Yes we do have a far cam at FoxSports.com and NFL.com. A camera that follows Brett his every move today here in his return to Lambeau Field. Log on if you'd like to check it out. I tell you Tom down here in this area is where they really miss their tight end Jermichael Finley. Four man rush. And across the middle down to the seven yard line is the starting tight end Donald Lee you talk about Finley in the first meeting against Minnesota six catches 128 receiving yards. Yeah six receptions all of last season as a rookie and then he really exploded in the game against Minnesota the first go around and, and he's been kind of a big play guy but more importantly he's been a big target down here in the red zone. Empty backfield quarterback draw. And Rodgers took a shot in the back as he was spun down at the four yard line by Pat Williams. Well that was a call draw the entire way and Pat Williams just does a great job of reading this and I mean look at the big guy move. I mean Aaron was still trying to pump fake him making him think that he was going to throw it so that he could still get a little separation and I mean that's pretty impressive. You know that guy he's listed at 317 pounds. I, I guarantee he's not a pound under 350 and he ran down Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers looking around and batted down by Kevin Williams. Third and goal. To say that this is an important third down is a gross understatement. I mean right now the, the Packers are in desperate need of a touchdown. Ninth play of the drive arguably the biggest play of the drive. And Rogers sacked back at the eight. Jared Allen again. That is five sacks. Yeah, and Rodgers. I, I think this is on Aaron Rodgers again. He got the trip set over here and he's working that way, but he's got a pocket to step up. He's got room to move and make something happen. And you can't stand back there and let these type of pass rushers come off the edge. And I, you know, I don't want to harp on it, but yet I think Aaron Rodgers is a terrific young player, but at some point he's got to realize that you can't take the sacks that he has taken. 26 yard field goal try is good by Mason Crosby. Field goal is not going to do it. 24 6 minutes. Almost a repeat like performance from the first meeting between these two teams in week four. Aaron Rodgers under tremendous pressure. Whip kick and out on a cross and a ball. Football is loose. And it looks like the Packers have recovered down at the bottom of that pile. They have. Brian Robinson, a defensive lineman, fielded the kick. And rather than perhaps just taking a knee and let somebody tap you to be down, he tried to turn it into something and that's a big well, turnover. Those guys don't get many opportunities to run with the football and, and and there's good reason why you do want them going to the ground because they're then easy targets to strip. And I'm not sure if if they were trying to kick the ball like that or that's just how it came off his foot. I can understand not wanting to kick it to Percy Harvin but the Vikings were going to get the ball with great field position. A.J. Hawk stripped it away before Nick Collins. Covered it up. So now Rodgers again in trouble. Rolls, throws, caught first down by Jennings to the 29 yard line. No, that's Grant out of the backfield, I beg your pardon. 
Well, this time it was Ray Edwards coming off the edge, and, and he's done a good job against Barber there on that offensive right side. And, and Aaron Rodgers almost gets a needless sack once again, but he is able to escape. And then he gets the ball to Ryan Grant. You know, they got some momentum back on their side after the turnover. Obviously, pretty important for them to do something with it here now. Still a lot of football to go. Eight minute mark in the third quarter. That catch is made by Donald Driver. He has a first down to the 18. Not much to talk about offensively for Green Bay most of the day. Although these last two drives now starting to come together a little bit better. I think the fact Ryan Grant only has 20 yards rushing is is probably the most surprising part considering how much success he has had against this Vikings team. Greenway had him lost him and Henderson corrals him from behind. That'll be a gain of two for Ryan Grant. You know this is an awfully aggressive defensive group. We talked about the linebackers in the first half. You know how good they are and their ability to pursue but they also get that kind of pursuit from their defensive front and the Packers really haven't done anything yet to try to neutralize the rush or some of the over aggressiveness by this defense with some play action misdirection some screens I thought we'd have seen a lot more of the screen game than what we've seen so far. Lamont Green in motion Rodgers loss nearly corralled by Donald Lee in the end zone third down upcoming just seemed to be a little bit of a miscommunication here with Aaron Rodgers looked like he expected Donald Lee to go a little deeper towards the corner of the end zone Donald Lee initially coming off of that route flattened it out and just was not able to get his arm out there and bring that one in you know as I said I, I think right now with what they're doing on the outside and the coverage that you miss at Jermichael Finley, someone who is a real tough matchup with virtually anyone they've got defensively. Rodgers to the end zone. Touchdown, Spencer Havener. And yes, even part time linebacker turned part time tight end. Know about the Lambeau leap. <laughs> well, Spencer Havner, yeah, a linebacker, and got his opportunity to get moved over to the tight end position because of how well he practiced when he was running the practice squad team for two years. Had a big touchdown reception a week ago against Cleveland, and boy, did this one come at a good time. is good to make it a 24 13 game and as Troy Aikman has been reminding us for two days Havner is a UCLA Bruin he should be this versatile right <laughs> the Packers take advantage of the fumble kickoff by Brian Robinson and Spencer Havner has scored a touchdown in back to back games Another line drive kick. Harvin comes up to get it at the 20. And he is dragged down at the 33 yard line by Brady Papinga. Well, that last drive started with the, the fumble here by Robison being able to recover that fumble. And then the touchdown to Havner. He's going to be in the slot. He runs a good route. He gets down the field, and you're going to see him pivot back out. You know, you've got Aaron Rodgers who starts working out of the pocket and that's that's a designed move right there and with great coverage I mean he's able to haul that in here's a guy who's a four year starter at linebacker as you said for UCLA and steps in here and he has really provided a spark not just here in this game but the last couple of games for this team nearly intercepted on the short throw to Adrian Peterson out of the backfield. Ball gets deflected and you're, you're fortunate right there. A ball that comes in high. 
that that one was not intercepted. It looked like if Nick Barnett had maybe seen it a little bit sooner, he might have been able to make a play on it. Adrian Peterson, a guy who has not caught a lot of balls you know, over the last couple of years, this year has been a more prominent figure, but most of those have been the check down variety like we just saw. Blitz coming, five steps up, and it's batted in the air and incomplete. Well, there were five Packers that looked like had a bead on that ball once it was tipped. Well, the great thing is you got Nick Barnett coming in. They they are now starting to bring a little bit of pressure, and, and Barnett comes up the middle, circles back around, and got just enough of the ball as far as going to make the throw. And that's a couple opportunities now that Green Bay's had to get consecutive turnovers. A great look at it right there. Ball up like that, it is rare that a ball like that's not intercepted. Incomplete on a throw to Shanko. So now the momentum clearly beginning to swing in favor of the home team. Desmond Bishop, who's getting his time on the field because of the injury to Brandon Chiller in coverage, does a nice job. On that third down, the Packers did not bring anybody. They stuck with their four-man pressure package. It was just good coverage. Bluey puts a foot on it, pounds it all the way back to the nine-yard line. Tremont Williams is drilled at the 15. Boy, did he get hit. Jamarcus Sanford leading the charge. Take a look ahead of next week, the NFL on Fox Week 9. Troy, you'll be in Chicago for the Cardinals and the Bears. The Packers will be here or on the road at Tampa Bay. Then Game 2, some will see the Lions and Seahawks, others the Panthers. And the undefeated New Orleans Saints. The four drive one Fox NFL Sunday show gets it all started. 11 a.m. Eastern time next week. 8 a.m. Pacific. That's a special starting time. Amon Green out of the backfield has a first down. And well, all of a sudden, this Green Bay crowd and team has come to life. And talking with Mike McCarthy, what did he tell us, Tom? The first time that Amon Green gets the ball, he's going to want to run somebody over. He's had the ball before now, but you saw that he was definitely looking up contact. You know, everybody was wondering how he would be able to come in here today with, without having had any contact since last November. But he's given this team a little something. Shaking up on a play. Ray Edwards. I can guarantee you that Alan Barber, the right tackle, is thrilled to see him walking off the field because he has given him fits. Great protection this time. And across the middle, the catch is made. To the 45, inside the 40, still on his feet is James Jones, just his seventh catch of the year, and that's a big one. Well, they bring in Ro Brian Robinson, Minnesota does, and he's going to then be working against Allen Barber, the right tackle, and he does a good job of giving protection then to Aaron Rodgers and a little unorthodox throw there by Rodgers, but effective nonetheless. And you've got James Jones then on the crossing pattern. And one of the few big plays they've had here today. Again, the tight end, Donald Lee, down to the 25-yard line. 4.45 to play in the third, and Green Bay sniffing points. In the first half, the Packers had 47 yards of offense. So far in the second half, 158. Blitz coming. Jennings to the 15. 
down to the 10. You're going to see that they motion Ryan Grant out of the backfield. They go empty set. What it does is it forces Minnesota then to go to a single high safety. He's going to drop in, and it opens up the throw in behind that then. A good execution there. They spotted at the 11. Jennings trying to beat Hamel. That's a five yard catch. Hard right, takedown there by Benny Sapp. Amon Green is checked into the backfield for Green Bay. And they give it to him. Third down. They can get a first down at the one. Injured Packer is a right tackle, Allen Barber. And some drawing going on. Donald Driver and Benny Sapp. Yeah, there's Donald Driver, and he's just trying to make a block, and not a lot to it, but Benny Sapp didn't like it, and, and both of those guys have a great deal of pride, particularly Donald Driver, and that's what ensues. Third down and four. Havener again, touchdown, and the game is on in Green Bay. Everybody in the stadium, perhaps those of us up here in the booth, were wondering if we were looking at a blowout. And all of a sudden, the lead is down to four. We're going to see Havener here on the slant. He was actually open right from the beginning, but Aaron Rodgers just did not work to him. But he did hang with him once he got flushed out of the pocket. And a nice job by Havener of just sitting it down in the hole. You see him right there. He sees that he cannot continue across the field because Chad Greenway is sitting in the way and he comes right back out on it and just a pretty good job for a guy who as we said it was a linebacker and just started playing some tight end but he has a great feel for how to get open. Well he spent parts of three years on the Packers practice squad. And you mentioned I mean they they give him a look on scout team and all of a sudden nobody could cover him nobody could defend him and they came up with the idea that you know why not have a guy that can play defense play offense play special teams that's a versatile and valuable guy and paying huge dividends now these last two weeks Percy Harvin trying to change the momentum trying to turn the corner across midfield and some of that momentum comes back to the Vikings side. This guy's going to be some kind of player. Well, you've got to maintain leverage on a guy like Percy Harvin. And Tremont Williams just got lazy. He was out there in a position to be able to turn him back inside. Instead, he kind of hung there thinking that somebody was going to be able to make the tackle on Harvin. You see him come into your picture, and he loses leverage. Ball at the Green Bay 38 yard line. 148 to play in the third quarter. And nowhere to go for Adrian Peterson on first down. Wrapped up by Clay Matthews. 
Well, Adrian Peterson having a little better day today than than what he had a month ago against the Packers. But I think still, all in all, if you were to ask Dom Capers, you know, hey, Adrian Peterson here in the third quarter would have 62 yards rushing. I, I think you'd probably feel pretty good about that. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Five. Miscommunication there with Barian. And really, you go all the way back to training camp where Barian did not play a single game and never got on the same page with Favre. I'll tell you what, right now, Green Bay's mixing it up on the outside. This is where Al Harris wants to be. He wants to be up in press coverage. Let me play the, play the receiver one on one, not worry about what anyone else is doing on the field. And then the Packers also brought the pressure up the middle. And so we've seen some different looks now by Green Bay defensively. And you see here Al Harris is again. Five. Fires again to Harvin who makes a catch down to the 22. Woodson delivered a hit, but the rookie out of Florida hung on and gets a pump of the fist from far. Well, Percy Harvin is running routes for the Minnesota Vikings that he just did not run at the University of Florida. I mean, a young guy, Favre took a shot at the very end of that play. You know, oftentimes not much, but go to the headgear and you get a flag. But Percy Harvin, for a young player doing things that really he hadn't done much of, has become a pretty good receiver. Peterson tries to cut it back the other way. Slowing him down was Matthews. And a flag is down. We saw Clay Matthew. He he went for the strip on Adrian Peterson. You remember back to that game last time and personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense number 90. This penalty will be assessed half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. B.J. Raji. You're going to see him go to the go to the helmet here and B.J. Raji right there and, and there's no other alternative other than the 15 yard variety and, and here's the end of that play that Clay Matthews looks very similar to what he was able to do you know in that Monday night game tried stripping Adrian Peterson and going the distance with it. Adrian Peterson is a guy who has been known to fumble. That will be the end of the third quarter. The Packers have gotten back into this thing, trailing 24-20. The NFL on Fox continues after a word from your local Fox station. Final stanza set to begin at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Five in the Vikings. First and goal after the penalty at the Packer nine. Leading 24 to 20. Peterson. Hammered at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Pickett, Aaron Campman both there to meet him. Pickett's played a nice game here today. Well, that, that was a nice job there on that play of, of just pushing the offensive line right back into the face of Adrian Peterson. Adrian to the sideline, Taylor into the backfield, second and goal. Chester Taylor inside the five and down to the two yard line. Got a good lead block from a six time Pro Bowl left guard, Steve Hutchinson. Boy, sure did, and a nice job there of execution by Minnesota. And you know, he gets a little bit of a crease, which is something that we haven't seen a lot of for Adrian Peterson. And, you know, Chester Taylor, just such a versatile guy that you can use out of the backfield as a receiver, an excellent runner, and then he's also very good in pass protection. Green Bay spends a timeout. Third and goal upcoming when we return.
Today's game is sponsored by Visa. Visa debit is easier than cash. More people go with Visa. By the newest $5 footlong, try the spicy buffalo chicken footlong, Subway, eat fresh. And by Bud Light. With a just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. Pretty good job there by Green Bay right here. 12 guys on the field and, and being able to recognize that and getting the timeout called. Five on third and goal. Throws a touchdown to the tight end, Jeff Dugan. Third touchdown pass today for Brett Favre. Yeah, you pack everybody up. Make it look like run. Dugan starts from the backfield. You can see him here into the flat. And then it's just a matter of getting everybody outflanked and getting the ball in his hands. And a good throw there by Brett Favre. That was pretty easy. Only the third reception of the season for Dugan. That's his first touchdown. And a point after is good. Favre is hit on 15 of 24, three touchdowns. More importantly, his team leads 31 to 20. Lambeau Field opened in 1957, and no one has played quarterback like Brett Favre for the Green Bay Packers or at Lambeau Field. Three more touchdown throws today for Favre, but of course, the first three as a visitor. Again, let's go downstairs to Pam Oliver. Pam. Well, Tom, even when things got a little hairy for the Vikings, that group remained upbeat and positive. One thing I saw numerous times is an empty bench. That means all of the players who weren't on the field at the time stepped out to the sideline to see what was happening. And of course, there were a lot of congratulations going on once Brett Favre and the, comp and, uh, the offense scored. Pam, thank you very much for that. This is a, a team that has become quite close in a short amount of time since Favre signed in the third week of August. Ryan Grant, a first down carry. Now, you know, you look at the addition of Favre, and really when all was said and done, you know, Troy, are you better with him than you were without him? And they're averaging six more points per game through seven games, and that number is going up with a 31 on the board today. Well, there's no doubt that they're better with Brett Favre. I mean, you take you take the first game against the Green Bay Packers as an example. When you hold Adrian Peterson to 2.2 yards per carry, that's a game the Vikings a year ago can't win, but yet they won it because of the arm of Brett Favre. Good protection for Rodgers. Reception by Greg Jennings. You know, I got to tell you, Tom, that was a heck of a drive by Minnesota answering. I mean, all the momentum had shifted. It was clearly behind the Green Bay Packers, obviously all set up by the return of Percy Harvin. I mean, there's a lot of yardage there with Percy Harvin on this in this return game that has made a real difference in, in the ball game. But still yet for them offensively to put together a drive and answer and take this game back to an 11 point ball game. Driver. I'm going to say he was down. Right at midfield Looked like. Tyrell Johnson put a hand on him when his knee was down. You talk about Harvin. I mean look at those return. That's four returns. Three of them. For 45 plus yards, and all three of those leading to touchdowns. Well, and Brad Childers, he was asked, hey, you know, you bring in a guy like Percy Harvin when they drafted him, he said, I want dynamic playmakers on our team. And I don't know that anybody thought that he would make as big a difference this early. In a return game, yes. But he's been he's been big in the uh, receiving game also. Rogers tiptoes out of trouble, and he's gonna run it. Still on his feet inside the 20, the 15, and steps out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Well, we've talked about it coming in. TJ Lang making his second NFL start. They help him out a little bit with Donald Lee before he goes out on his route, but good job by the rookie. And Aaron Rodgers just finds the crease, and he is coached to do that. Step up in the pocket, 
get flushed out, look for a receiver, and that gives you a pretty good idea why he's the second leading rusher on this Green Bay team. A season-long 35-yard run by Rodgers. They said he stepped out of bounds right at the 15. Out of the shotgun. Batted down at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Williams. Well, there's still a long way to go. Just under 11 minutes to play. Well, this is a, this is a good job here by Green Bay. I mean, it, it, with... With this much time in the game, I mean, it's a seesaw battle, and you got to be able to match points when Minnesota goes down and makes it a two point or a two game, two possession game. But right now, this is pretty good for the Packers. Flint's coming. He gets rid of it in a hurry. Good move by Jennings. Slips the tackle of Pema. And it's down to the 10, it's third and five. Yeah, that, that was an excellent job there by Jennings of getting more out of that than what it initially looked like. And that's what we've seen a lot from Brett Favre, throwing it out quick to the receivers. But Greg Jennings starts payment inside and then is able to get back out and break a tackle. Right, picked up four or five more yards than what was really there. a flag all the way and a touchdown reception by Jennings the flag came down long before the ball was ever in the end zone we have to wait the official verdict they got tangled up with Pema did Jennings in the corner of the end zone Aaron Rodgers doesn't get this throw off if we don't get the block right there by Brandon there are two Jackson. Fouls in the play, both of them against Minnesota. Holding defense. This penalty is declined. Pass interference. Defense number 41. This penalty is declined also. Yeah, that's play one results the, in a touchdown. That's one of the greatest catches I've ever seen. You know, I mean, pretty remarkable. Yep. I mean, he was he was getting banged around pretty good, and I, I don't know that he ever even saw the ball really coming out of Aaron Rodgers' hands, but yet, as he's stumbling along, he's he's able to then locate the football and and, and bring it in. I think oftentimes he, he, we... Well, they're going to go for two here. Trying to get it down to a three-point game. Green Bay one of two on two-point conversions this season. Right through the fingertips of Ryan Grant. A five point game at Lambeau. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cadillac. Didn't take long, three minutes and nine seconds. Seven plays, 74 yards for the touchdown. And now Percy Harvin, who has been a huge factor, especially in the return game for Minnesota, takes this one from his own 11. Not so fortunate this time. Now here's the two-point conversion play by Kevin Williams. Didn't see this live, but it actually goes, he almost caught it with his bicep, but it goes, it goes right. <laughs> right between his arm there and that's what deflected it just enough to keep Ryan Grant from being able to haul that in initially it just looked because it was there I mean if they were able to make that catch and execute that play that was, that was a pretty easy two point conversion but a good play by the Pro Bowl 10 23 to play at Lambeau Field in Green Bay a five point Minnesota lead. Peterson just runs right through Atari Bigby, and Bigby not afraid to deliver a hit himself. Well, I think I think it was more self-defense on his part. I mean, look, he doesn't even put his arms out there. He just he just he just knew what was coming, and it was going to be painful. And he just closed his eyes and took it. But he, he didn't even come up and try to wrap him with his arms and make a tackle. Gain of seven for Peterson. Second down and three.
Peterson across midfield and tackled from behind at the 46 yard line. Yeah, Aaron Campman, he actually plays this pretty good, but he was just too slow in reacting. You're going to see him squeeze this. He's going to come underneath and try to make a play there, but he just couldn't get there in time. And then that's the lane. And once once you see Adrian Peterson get to that second level, I mean, it's rare that you're not going to then see him get on to the third level. Peterson, 21 carries now for 94 yards. First down for Minnesota. Chester Taylor trying to get lost behind a couple of those big offensive linemen carries down to the 42. Don't turn your dial because at the conclusion of this one we go to Philadelphia for a game four of the World Series. The Yankees leading that series two games to one. Joe Bland on the hill trying to even a series for Charlie Manuel's team. CC Safafia starts for New York. Great protection, then it collapses at the end. Favre could not find an open receiver and took a hit from Matthews. It's one of the few times that we've really seen both Al Harris and Charles Woodson locked up in man coverage. Now they're not coming up and jamming them. They're giving them free releases off the line of scrimmage. But because they were up press, they didn't give anything right away then to Brett Favre, and then that was Matthews coming around the backside and able to make the play. Third and six. Thrown behind the intended receiver, Harvin. So Green Bay will get the football, trailing by five. It was Matthews and Jenkins applying the pressure that time. Well, and they did it with a four-man rush. I mean, this was the difference. They got pressure on Favre. He, he was open. You're going to see Harvin is open there in the hole, but because of the pressure, then it's a throw that's behind him. That's one of the few times they've gotten to Favre with, with pressure with just a four-man rush. That bounces the wrong way for Minnesota. Down to the 18. Aaron Rodgers, the man who took over for Brett Favre, with a chance to give his team the lead. Turning into the kind of game we thought it would be before kickoff. One sided in the opening half in favor of Minnesota. Green Bay's had the ball four possessions in this half and scored on every possession. Breaking a tackle is Kuhn, and he's out to the 34. Boy, he's a load to bring down is Mr. John Kuhn. A pretty impressive second half here by this offensive line and the protection that they are now affording Aaron Rodgers. You know, good coverage again, much like what we saw there in that first half by this secondary for for the Minnesota Vikings. But because he had time, he was then able to come underneath to Kuhn and make it a positive play. Bad snap. Rogers able to get his hands on it and then throws complete over the middle to midfield to Donald Driver. Penalty flag down. Behind the line of scrimmage. Drivers shaken up after making the catch. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 91. Unnecessarily threw the quarterback into the ground. The 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. Well, and it starts with a bad snap by Scott Wells, and you know, just an excellent job there by Aaron Rodgers of keeping the play alive and being able to find driver. And there's the, the hit. By Ray Edwards, you know, I don't know. I mean, that, the official made that sound like it was pretty serious. I mean, he just came in and and made <laughs> made a tackle. I, I don't know what a penalty is anymore on a quarterback, but good execution there by Green Bay and Donald Driver being able to make that catch. 
Well, they're still taking a look at driver. He has been such a huge weapon, a three-time Pro Bowler. Surpassed Shannon Sharp this season to become the franchise's all-time leader in career receptions. And this crowd is trying to will Donald Driver to get to his feet. Tell you this if there's any way that Donald Driver can get back out on that field and play, he'll play. He's one of the most competitive guys in all of football, one of the toughest guys as well. They attack on the 15 yards, and it's first down Green Bay at the Minnesota 35 yard line. 7.24 to go, and Green Bay trailing by five. And they bring in Jake Allen, who was just signed off the practice squad this week. Allen, number 13. Blitz coming. Rodgers gets it away. And Jennings slips a tackle and turns it into a nine yard pickup. You know, Jared Allen this time tries to bull rush on T.J. Lang, and he holds up pretty good. You know, that's not easy to do, and yet he was able to, to hold up, and then Jared Allen is setting him up because he'll, he'll do the bull rush, and then what you're going to see is Jared Allen come with some kind of outside speed rush here real soon. Donald Driver checks back in for the Packers. And Rodgers is that a sack they're saying Jared Allen is saying sack and the officials agree. Yeah he went down on a knee and T.J. Lang did such a good job that this time they decided they wouldn't put anybody on Jared Allen. You know he just got a free run. <laughs> I, it, obviously that's not what was drawn up. I, mean, I knew a speed rush was coming but I thought at least somebody would try to slow him down. Third down and eight. Blitz coming again. They pick it up. Rodgers to driver and nearly intercepted by Benny Sapp. So the third and eight, an incomplete pass by Rodgers, who limps off the field. He's brought his team back from a 24-3 deficit to make it a five-point game. And again, Rodgers will be looked at over on the Green Bay sideline. This will be a long field goal try for Mason Crosby. 51 yards. He's hit on one of three from 50 and beyond this year. We thought early on this would turn into a blowout. All the anticipation of Brett Favre's return to Green Bay for the first time as a visiting player. The sacks were piling up again as they did in the first meeting between these two teams. And Favre was rolling. But in the second half, Green Bay's offense has come alive. A touchdown pass to Havener. Do get a touchdown catch to swing the momentum the other way. But then Green Bay scored to make it a 31-26 game. Favre gets the ball back with 5.38 to go. And he's throwing on first down. A screen to Adrian Peterson, who rushes down the sideline, cuts it back to the inside, and tackled at the 14-yard line. You know, once Adrian Peterson gets to the outside and the, and the offensive line doing such a good job, Steve Hutchinson, the left guard, he's the one who really sealed it all off. 
and kept anybody from being able to get in pursuit of Adrian Peterson until he was well down the field. A 44-yard gain. Peterson leapfrogs one tackler and it is dropped after a very short gain. Obviously for the Green Bay defense here, Troy, it's got to be a field goal, which would leave you within eight. Touchdown, two-point conversion, a tie. Yeah, because if you look at the clock and you say if this becomes a two-possession game for Green Bay, I, I think they're going to just run out of time. So, you know, this is... This is critical for Green Bay to hold them to nothing more than a field goal attempt. Chester Taylor caught from behind by Matthews. Boy, his daddy was a great football player for so many years in Cleveland. Clay Matthews just comes right down the line and oftentimes that's the guy who's unaccounted for you're just hoping that he's going to play maybe the naked from the quarterback off the back and, and Clay Matthews did not and made for an easy tackle for a loss. Well, Troy you and I were so excited our entire crew I think everybody across America that loves watching the NFL knowing that this game was finally here and all the buildup of Brett Favre coming back to Green Bay. He's played beautifully. It's turned into a good game. It looked like Green Bay was going to get run out of their own gym there for a while. Yeah, it sure did. And yeah, I think you got to give Green Bay credit for the way that they came out here in this second half. I, I'd like to have known what Mike McCarthy might have said to that offensive line going in there at halftime because they've blocked much better here in the second half. And as a result, you know, it's allowed Green Bay to get back into this ball game and turn it into something and and now the game really comes down to what's about to happen here for the Minnesota Vikings offensively. Well the Packers have just spent their final time out so if they get the football back and obviously they're hoping for just a field goal in this situation. They'll have plenty of time. But no timeouts left for Green Bay. Five a short drop catch is made and close to the end zone touchdown Bernard Berrien. Four touchdown pass of the game for number four. Well the Green Bay Packers they brought the blitz off of that side thinking that if they could get to Favre or at least make him get the ball out of his hands that they could then come up and make a tackle short of the first down. Didn't happen that way. Well for Brett Favre only fitting it would be a record setting day 21st time in his career four touchdowns or more in a game. You see him right here they come with the pressure and, and yet Favre does have to get the ball out. They just allowed Bernard Berrien to come off the line of scrimmage you know really uncontested. And Favre is as good as there is in the league at sensing the blitz, getting it out. He got it out quick and gave Berrien an opportunity to then make a play after the catch. With the 21 games of four or more touchdown passes, Favre has tied Dan Marino for the most such games in NFL history. First game against his former team. Favre became the first quarterback in NFL history to beat all 32 teams in a career. Threw for 271 yards in that game, three touchdowns without a pick. So in two games against Green Bay, seven touchdown passes for oh. Brett Favre. On Green to the 26 yard line. Don't forget, stay tuned for the OT presented by Lowe's. 
And that will carry you right up to World Series action from Philadelphia, game four. The Yankees and the Phils. You know, it's really not all that surprising, is it, Tom, that he's done what he's done against the Green Bay Packers this year? I mean, he's always, you know, throughout his career, has had a real flair for the moment. And I think anybody who has followed Brett Favre, I can't imagine anybody that hasn't, you know, fully expected him to come out here tonight and play well. Rodgers. Had an open receiver, but boy did he take a hit from Jimmy Kennedy just as he threw the football. And Rodgers telling the training staff, don't even bother. And right at the end of this, you're going to see it as he gets it right up the middle. And Kevin, Second and Jimmy Kennedy, and you know those are the kind. There's a lot of hits on a quarterback that that don't hurt as bad as what they might look. That's not one of them. When you're stepping into a throw. And you're taking a helmet right to the midsection. Catch by Donald Driver for a very short game. Third down upcoming, and again, Green Bay out of timeouts. Yeah, and Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator, still bringing pressure on Aaron Rodgers. And, and you know, this game, the first time, a lot of yards picked up by Green Bay in a similar situation when they were down two scores. And I don't think Leslie Frazier wants to see that happen again. First down catch made by Lee, steps out of bounds, stopping the clock with 3.10 to go. First down. Ted Thompson, the general manager, executive vice president. And so many have linked Ted Thompson and his relationship or lack thereof with Brett Favre leaving Green Bay at the end of the 2007 season. So, you know, Troy, I thought that you were the one who put it best. Well, we were talking about all this a couple of days ago and how you've always felt like, you know, everything may not turn out perfect, but Perhaps if everybody would have sat down, and we're not going to rehash history or blame someone here or blame the organization there. Nobody won on that deal. Well, I would just say this. I'm not so sure that Brett Favre ever wanted to come back and play for the Green Bay Packers. And, and I think that that's a side of it that a lot of people have never taken the time to really consider. Rodgers throws and it's incomplete he had an eye on Jennings who is well covered by Carl Pamer there is a penalty flag down or no an injured player down I'm sorry and it is Jennings no flag on the play couldn't see exactly what happened to Jennings at the end of this play you see just giving him a shot along the sideline and Comes down off his shoulder or, or what might have happened there and far have given the call. You know the legendary baseball broadcaster Harry Carey used to say to me regularly when we worked together for many years in Chicago there's three sides to every story Tom your side my side and the truth and I'm not sure if anyone is ever going to know the entire story. As it appears Jennings is OK of why Brett Favre was not a Green Bay Packer at the end of 2007. But hopefully a night like tonight is a night where everybody can just move on because the full circle has now been completed. You see him in a Vikings uniform. He plays the Packers in Minnesota. He comes here and plays the Packers at Lambeau Field. Life will move on. <laughs> well. I think that sounds real good. <laughs> I'm not so sure life just moves on for the Green Bay Packer fans. Catch made over the middle by James Jones, and that is the first down to keep this drive alive with 2.51 left. Penalty flag all the way back at the 30 yard line. So that completion may be coming back. Holding. Offense number 78 10 yard penalty repeat third down. You know I will go back though Tom and you know we talked about it coming into this ball game. I, I, I really this was an important game for everybody you know everybody in this for both teams. 
It's important for Brett Favre. Everybody wanted to know how Brett Favre felt about coming in to Lambeau and playing. I still maintain that this game meant more or was more important to Aaron Rodgers than it was to Brett Favre. Brett Favre's had a Hall of Fame career. I mean, that career has been played out. It's been great. We all know that. Aaron Rodgers just commenced on his career, and he's trying to build a legacy of his own and prove to a lot of people that he is the franchise. Incomplete on third down. Favre had a had something to say there to Greg Jennings when he got up to, to walk off the field that that brought a laugh and you know I know that Brett sure thanks a lot of Greg Jennings and, and really a lot of these guys with this team Greg Jennings played well for old number four when they were on the team together Rogers on fourth down lets it fly incomplete and that ought to do it Far will start the celebration with his Minnesota Viking teammates. Well, I know when we visited with him the other day, and, and he, you know, he didn't really want to commit too much as to what this game meant. And I think the big reason was because he was afraid of putting too much of an emphasis on this game. And then if he were to not come out and play well, or the team weren't to play well and they lose. Then you know maybe they put too much into one ball game, and how do you rebound then from that? And as was the case the last time he played against the Packers, I think we'll get a better indication as to what this game meant with his comments following the game. Well, Minnesota, two minutes and 20 seconds away. From a seven and one start, their best start since the 2000 season. They've now won 16 of their last 20 games, and this will be the first sweep against their rival Packers since 2005. Next week is a bye week. This will take us to the two minute warning. 16 glorious years wearing the green and gold, and two minutes away from. Winning one wearing the purple and white. Today's game is sponsored by Sprint. This is the NFL Now, only from Sprint, the Now Network, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. Two minutes away from leading the Vikings to a season sweep over his former team, the Green Bay Packers. You know, Troy, when we come to these cities, you read the local newspapers, and, and clearly the coverage of Favre coming back here during this entire week and all the way through the Sunday papers today. I thought they did a really nice job of, of trying to put into perspective on so many levels. The relationship the fans in Green Bay have with Favre. I mean, when he came here, he's a guy in his early 20s, like to hang out in the bars and do what a lot of guys in their 20s like to do that are single. Then he got married, became a father. Remember the Monday night game where his dad had died the night before he comes out. Clearly a very emotional night. They rooted for his wife, Deanna. She was battling Murder breast cancer. I mean, they watch this guy go from a young man to an adult. Much like fans in Dallas watched you do the same thing after you left UCLA and and really a lot of nice stories written even with the rivalry and maybe some of the bad blood that has transpired since he left here two years ago. Well it's been a love it's been a love affair with Brett Favre and the fans here in Green Bay for for 16 years. You know, and no one would have ever thought that you would see someone like Brett with the career that he had go on and play anywhere else. And it's been hard. I mean, it's been emotional for those that have been a part of it, the players, Brett Favre, but it's been emotional 
for these fans for all the reasons that you just said. You know I'm asked a lot as to what I'm most impressed with at 40 years old about Brett playing and it hasn't really been his performance because you kind of expect that it's been that he's been able to come back each week and play. And you talked about this being their bye week and this comes at a really good time for Brett Favre. In fact he said that this week he missed some practice time for the first time and had to get into the cold plunge which is I never liked getting into it because it is so cold but he had to get into it just to try to get ready for this ball game here today and I think that's the big question you know is he going to maintain this level of play as we move through this season and you look at this Minnesota team you and I in the last three weeks have seen two of the best teams in the NFC Minnesota and New Orleans Saints are still undefeated could you imagine those two teams getting together in a dome well, I, I will tell you that, you know, now having seen the Vikings and also having covered the Saints this year, I, I think the Saints, as we sit here tonight, are the cream of the crop in the NFC. We're down to only two unbeatens. Matt Flynn takes over at quarterback. And they pitch it once, then a fumble. Matt Flynn's pass complete to Lee. And it's covered up by Green Bay. Well, Brett Favre will receive congratulations from his teammates. We're going to stop the clock with two seconds remaining. And now it'll expire, and the Vikings go to 7-1. and one. The Packers slip to 4-3. and three. Former Packers Ryan Longwell and Brett Favre celebrating the 38-26 win. Troy enjoyed it. We send you now bonus coverage to the desert where Chris Myers and Brian Billick will take you home from the Panthers and the Arizona Cardinals. So long, everybody.